Planet Eve. Kerbal Space Program's final boss. Its dense atmosphere and powerful gravity make any flight to orbit from its surface extremely difficult. But what if we start there? The challenge begins, like every other KSP playthrough, with a simple Challenge Free Rocket. It is like the Hello World of KSP. Oh. The flea has done some work out at the gym and is now extra buff. Hopefully with all this extra power the capsule will get high enough to have the time to properly deploy the chute. Much better. Alright, that first flight gave us 140 science points. Let's think about what to do with them. All the engines in these nodes are very bad in Eve's atmosphere. All the good engines are in these nodes but they are all very far down the tech tree. The first node to give us somewhat decent engines is heavy rocketry with the skipper and the bobcat. Another node we should unlock as soon as possible is fuel systems. It gives us the fuel pipe which will make asparagus staging viable. After that we should work towards miniaturization. It contains the first docking port. This will allow us to build and refuel larger structures in orbit. And this is what the tech tree looks like now. This is the next rocket, the Eve Yeater. It is powered by two foots, which only give it a thrust to weight ratio of just barely over one. But as long as you can get off the ground, it doesn't need to go very far. Great success! With that, heavy rocketry and fuel systems can be unlocked. Our next rocket is going to be much more capable. This is the Eve Yeater 2, an asparagus stage rocket with 8 bobcats and a skipper. This should be able to give us some of that sweet, sweet upper atmosphere science. The rocket performed even better than expected. I was expecting it to just put the capsule in the upper atmosphere, but with an apoapsis of 100 kilometers, I even got about a minute of time in space. More than enough time for some more experiments. That unexpected success gave me 750 science points to work with. However, we should be careful spending them. Most of the easily reachable science has now been obtained. There is still the high space science, but after that we must go to other objects to gather more. And we haven't even reached orbit yet. With the new research, I have constructed the EVE Heater 3, the first orbital rocket. It is able to put about 2.5 tons into orbit. The first payload is not nearly that heavy, so we will have some spare fuel once we get up there. I have used three of the newly researched twin bore engines because they actually work really well in a dense atmosphere. Although I should really unlock struts soon because these boosters seem to think this is KSP2. The rocket makes it to orbit with a thousand meters per second of delta V left, enough to get high space science. The re-entry is made extra spectacular by the newly released Firefly mod. It completely overhauls the atmospheric effects in the game and looks amazing. At this point the focus of the space program becomes a landing on Gilly, Eve's only moon. To make this mission easier, I unlocked advanced construction for struts anti-fairing and precision engineering for the RA2 antenna. I need this antenna because uncrewed spacecrafts have to communicate all the way back to Kerbin to work effectively. While it is technically possible to connect to Kerbin by spamming dozens of HD5 antennas, unlocking the RA2 will make a relay satellite much more practical. This rocket contains two satellites that will be delivered to slightly different orbits, one of which is a relay and the other one is a simple satellite that will be put into a low orbit at the same inclination as Gilly, so that it can serve as a launching target when putting together a mission. Unfortunately the fairing texture has bugged and looks fully black, this issue will be fixed later in the video. Now that the orbital inclination has been matched with Gillies, the small target satellite can be released. The bigger relay will now be put into a more eccentric orbit so that it will be above the horizon for a longer time. This is the first launch of Project Spot. This is the crew module, it will dock in orbit with a transfer stage. The transfer stage has a higher mass than what the EFG 3 can put into orbit. So it will finish the orbit with its own engine and then be refueled.
After entering orbit of Gilly, I realized I forgot to put most science experiments on the ship. I only have the science junior and the various experiments Bob can do on his own, but that is still enough to make the mission worthwhile. Unfortunately, it turns out that I underestimated the amount of fuel I would need for this mission. And I don't have enough left to return to EVE. Time for a rescue mission. At this point another problem emerged. The refueler is controlled by a communication link which goes through the relay satellite we launched earlier. When Gilly is at its closest point to EVE, this is not a problem, but it is moving away and so the distance to the relay is increasing beyond its range. Right now the connection is only at 2%, but it is likely to completely end soon. We are in a race against the clock. Now that we have more than enough fuel to complete the mission, Bob puts the remaining fuel back into Gilly orbit and continues exploring the surface. There are three biomes on Gilly and they want signs from all of them. Bob has returned from his adventure with a whopping 3000 science points. With that I unlocked many notes, some notable ones being the long awaited very heavy rocketry, advanced science tech and nuclear propulsion. Now that I have unlocked the defector engines, I can make a new heavy lift rocket, the EVE Yeater 4. It can carry 20 tons to low EVE orbit. Its first payload is a mining base for Gilly named the Mosquito. It will produce fuel on Gilly so that it doesn't have to be launched. The next launch is a rideshare mission. On board are three new communication satellites to improve communications around EVE, a Gilly scanning satellite to find a good ore mining site, and some extra fuel to get the Mosquito to Gilly. Getting the scanner to work was a real hassle. After I got into orbit, I noticed that I accidentally removed the antenna in the VAB and it could not transmit its data. To solve that, I used the old EVE relay's remaining fuel to put it into orbit of Gilly. The scanner is now connected, but it apparently needed an actual antenna instead of only a comlink. So I flew over the Mosquito to Gilly orbit, did a rendezvous and made one of the Kerbals on the base attach an antenna to the satellite. And it still didn't work, because it did not have enough electricity. So I also slept on one of the base's batteries, and it finally finally worked. And the Mosquito can land on a place with a good ore supply. Mosquito has landed, now it is time for the next piece of infrastructure, the fuel hauler. The fuel hauler really isn't all that special, but one thing I do want to highlight is the nifty heat shield that moves in front of the engine to protect it during aero braking. With the new fuel hauler, I can transport enough fuel to start the first interplanetary mission. This is Project Snowball, and it is on its way to the moons of Kerbin.
With the science gained from Project Snowball, I can unlock the Ion Engine for the next mission. After that there are no science nodes left that I really need, so from this point the goal is simply to complete the tech tree. One problem I have is that I completely forgot that ablator on heat shields is finite, so the fuel hauler isn't actually reusable. To fix that, Jeb quickly flies into orbit to attach a new inflatable heat shield, which can be used indefinitely. Unfortunately that means that the nifty engine heat shield won't be used anymore. It is time to take advantage of our proximity to Kerbal and Moho by doing a Moho mission using ion propulsion. This is Project Meatball. Remember how I didn't get all the signs from Gilly? This is the potato squeezer and this is going to squeeze every possible science point from Gilly, hopefully enough to complete the tech tree. It does however require another quick review from the fuel hauler.
That gave us just enough science points to finish the tech tree. So, is it possible to beat KSP from EVE? Yes, yes it is.